I have double of the 677 MTHFR variant from my mom, one from my dad. Yep. And um, But let's talk about some of these health conditions. You mentioned them a little bit when you said like these kids with ADHD and you talked about bipolar. So it, are our mental health issues maybe because of this variant? Are these all these different conditions maybe because of this variant? What okay. are these? Yeah. So all these conditions maybe because of this variant. I will take that same statement and I will say all these conditions you are more vulnerable to mm -hmm. because of this variant. Having the MTHFR variant does not equal that you will have bipolar or infertility or any of these pro any of these things. It means that you're vulnerable. Why are you vulnerable? You're vulnerable because you have a reduced ability to make methylfolate, right? So in your situation, you have around these 70, 80% reduced capacity to make methylfolate. So do I with my 677 and 1298. My childhood, my young adulthood, my early adulthood, or even middle, um, I didn't find out I didn't too far until 2011. And I was born in the 74. And when I found out, I was, I was terrified, first of all, and then when I started learning about it, I was like, oh, this is just a functional thing. If I supplement with, with methylfolate, or if I change my diet, or if I eliminate things that slow it down, like folic acid and nitrous oxide and, and all those other things, then I still have a 30% capacity of my MTFR enzyme working. So if you don't overwork your MTFR enzyme and you nourish it through healthy lifestyle and food and, and, and so on, you're fine. You're totally fine. It, so... I don't know the, it's like the American College of, of Medical Gynecology or ACMG or whatever it's called. They don't like me. They despise mm -hmm. me. A lot of medical organizations don't like me and they don't like me because they're actually not hearing me. They're just reacting. It's very important to listen fully versus just immediately react to things. And the American College of Medical Genetics they don't like, and they say flat out, testing for MTHFR is a waste of time. It is mm -hmm. not associated with any condition that, you know, in a linear relationship. And I will say they are right. Celiac disease. If you have celiac, you have one to three different genetic variations that you are you know, very, very, uh, at risk of eating gluten, you eat gluten, you're in trouble, right? Cystic fibrosis, genetic variation, boom, you have cystic fibrosis, MTHFR genetic variation, boom. Oh yeah. Okay. There's no real set genetic problem here that we're seeing. So by that statement, then we don't need to test for it. Well, imagine and I, I learned this from Dr. Tom O'Brien, who had a great point. Imagine you are climbing a rope and you're 300 feet above the ground and your rope is 100 feet long. And at the 63rd foot long part of that rope, there's a fray and it's a pretty significant fray. And your buddy sees it up at the top and you're like, uh, your rope is compromised, pal. It's like, okay. Let's not put that over that anchor point. We'll have that, you know, and we'll tie a different knot. We'll double it up. We'll, you know, we'll do something to strengthen that. That's an awareness that you have a vulnerability. You take action if you have a vulnerability. You ignore that vulnerability and they move that vulnerable part of rope to the edge of a cliff where it's sharper. That rope snaps, person falls to their death. And you might say, oh, that's pretty severe to equate MCFR genetic variations to that. No, it's really not because uh, all these people who have the MCFR genetic variation, 677 double like yourself, compound heterozygous, what they call mine, one of 1298, one um, we are quite vulnerable. And understanding that we are vulnerable allows us to take action and be empowered. Now, to go back to answer your question, sometimes I go on these tangents because it's important to preface, but I'm back in PubMed. I typed in MCFR. I'm just going to read from the first citation down. 
um, MTHFR, cardiovascular risks, lipedema, diabetic retinopathy, hypertension, gynecology, uh, methyltrexate treatment in rheumatoid arthritis patients, um, pharmacogenetic, pharmacogenetic relevance of MTHFR polymorphisms. What's that mean? That means if you have an MTHFR genetic variation and the doctors prescribe you certain medications, are you at risk for some issues of having an MTHFR genetic variation if you are given that medication? And I will say two right off the top, methyltrexate, 100%, nitrous oxide known as laughing gas. 100%. Hmm. If you have an MCVR gene variant, so you, Carlin, you need to avoid both of those. If it, and I will say it is best to avoid both of those in the event that you have to have either methotrexate or um, laughing gas, then there are, there's interventions that you can do to support the horrible um, consequences of both of those. So the exposure is very significant. What laughing gas does is it basically destroys vitamin B12. It literally oxidizes the hell out of it. Mm. And if you oxidize the hell out of your B12, methylfolate and methyl, hear that? Methylcobalamin and methylfolate. And a lot of you know that methylcobalamin form of B12 is the better form of B12. You, most of you know that. You mm -hmm. know that cyanocobalamin is the dog crap version of B12. Yeah. Methyl the, is the Rolls Royce. Folic acid is a dog crap version of folate. Methylfolate is the Rolls Royce. And so when you have methylfolate and methylcobalamin supporting methylation, everything is good. And so what happens with nitrous oxide is the methylcobalamin uh, gets ruined. Methylfolate and, and methylcobalamin are a tag team. They are a, a dynamic duo. They need both in order to function. Otherwise, you have what's called methyl trapping. And then you have homocysteine. Um, which is a, we'll get into it later, but that becomes a problem. And then you, you can actually have significant dementia. And, and in, in case of these, these parents with their kids who had laughing gas, I'm belaboring this a little bit because it's important. These kids were in a coma and never woke up. Oh, wow. That's yeah. really sad. Yeah. Well, horrible. it yeah. goes back to your point though, that it's an awareness thing. Knowing mm -hmm. you have the MTHFR just makes you aware to be able to do different or better for your body.